So that the whole like, what was the old show that flipped my house, whatever, flip this house. So that's not you, right? Like you're no, not... no, okay, I'm okay. like the Statue of Liberty or like tilapia in the business. Like, give me your weak, you're hungry, and you're poor. That's like me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Welcome to Mosaic Minds, the podcast where every episode is a colorful blend of perspectives, ideas, and conversation. Each week, our diverse team of hosts brings their unique backgrounds, experiences, and interests to the table. Mosaic Minds is your invitation to join the conversation to see the world through a kaleidoscope of viewpoints. So grab a seat, tune in, and let the mosaic unfold before you. Welcome to another episode of Mosaic Minds Podcast. My name is Nick, and to my right here is Jason. And today we are joined by Rob Bergeron. He is a dedicated realtor who provides a complete real estate ecosystem in the Louisville area. He's committed to helping clients achieve their real estate dreams with integrity, support, and expert guidance. And we're going to talk about some other things, too, maybe some sports and some of the uh, nightlife in Louisville. Uh, but let's welcome uh, Rob to the show. And Rob, if you don't mind... Again, thanks for being on, but if you don't mind, uh, could you give us just a little bit of a background of you? Sure. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, I guess I've been an investor-friendly realtor for like 10 years here in Louisville, Kentucky, and like I didn't know anybody, and so I was posting like any property I could find on Craigslist. And uh, essentially, like if anybody posted one ad on Craigslist, I post like 50. I got really competitive with it. And it was something I could do while I was watching Netflix. And so I just did that. And eventually I wasn't competing against anybody. And this guy at Hampton reached out to me. and was like, hey, can I see this very cheap property? And I was like, of course. So I took him out and um, started working with him because he was so responsive because I didn't have anything else to do and found out he's like the dude. And everyone else was like, well, if Hampton's working with Rob, I guess I should too. And then I just kind of blew up and I was like, crap, I've got to uh, reread Rich Dad, Poor Dad again and started going to every meetup and did that for three years. And I was like, eventually I was like, ah, I might be one of the smarter people in the room because like, if I don't know the answer, well, I know, I know the person who does and like kind of build a reputation for that. And then I started running comps for all the wholesalers and like, I never stole their deals and I got them to them quickly and I was reliable, like they were good. And so I eventually said, hey, instead of working against each other, why don't we work together? And they all gave me their buyers list and combined it with my already dope buyers list. And uh, I said, hey, like, put your deal out on my website. If I move your deal and connect you with a buyer, I charge $2,000 at closing. In like the first year, a website made 42 k It's like just insane. So now we actually give that service away for free. And um, we generate a revenue by working with the buyers, those deals draw and converting them to investor clients uh, for Realtor Rob and in Indiana and Louisville and Texas and kind of all over the country, honestly. I'll oh, bring me a little bit. So I spend time over in Jeffersonville with my cousins. We eat there at sure. the Red Yeti. Uh, we like, love the steak and the shrimp and the, the grits there. But uh, anyway, educate me on the pockets of Louisville. Um, maybe like four to six areas that kind of define what part of the city uh, you're matriculating into for me. For like, um, like what my investors are kind of doing, like, for, like with their money, essentially. Yeah, like in, in locally to throw it out, we got Broad Ripple, we got downtown Indy, we got the suburbs. Like, I, I'm I'm kind of interested in maybe the pockets. Of yeah. Louisville. Like, what what are the trendy up and coming markets in your opinion in the world boy? That's great. So I, I like I just had someone reach out to me and I was like. Honestly, it sounds like you should invest in Indy is what I told him because like you guys, right? You can build out forever. We are, we're landlocked by the river. So like everybody's like, I want a 3-2 built 1970 and later. And I was like, you got to go to Indy because like all of our houses were built in the 50s. Uh, but uh, we have tons of areas that are really super dope. Um, the one area I tell my clients to really key in on right now is... Um, Arden County, Radcliffe, but it's, there's this new like battery factory for Ford coming in, but it's like supposed to bring in, well, it was a $5 billion investment, which is like 
the biggest investment I've ever seen in Kentucky. And since then, we've had like smaller billions for other battery factories. So we have this like cool corridor stuff going on. We have Amazon. Louisville's kind of just popping. We've got food, bourbon. Like we, this year, we're passing Napa Valley in tourism revenue for the bourbon trail. And that's why you're seeing all this urban bourbon stuff coming to downtown because, yeah, it's cool getting everybody out outside of Louisville, but we want to keep them in town too. And it's like less driving. It's just like more pragmatic. But all that stuff is just driving a ton of growth here. And we have this, um, our, our hardest problem is uh, attracting big companies to Kentucky. And so now we have our income tax. It drops half a percent every year. Until, as long as we hit certain thresholds on generating other revenue. So we hit it this year. So we dropped half a percent. Um, so that'll be zero eventually. So we should be able to compete with like Texas and all those other things. Now, obviously, we're going to get bit other places, but it'll be good for business. Yeah. How, how, does the, uh, how does the Fed affect what you do or does it much? The Fed? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So I, I met with my mortgage lender today and I was like, dude, have you seen the news? Like we were all expecting like um, 25 basis points and it, they're expecting 50. And that to me means that's not a slow like shift. That means like, oops, we like took this too far. Um, So I think it's interesting. And I have like, everyone's really negative about the market, but I have so much sunshine to pump right now. Uh, so during COVID, I've been, I just spoke at something. So I have some like pre queued up stuff, but COVID, we were pre COVID, we were like 10% and 12% appreciation. And then last year, we were like 2.3, which is still good growth. But right already this year, we're at like 8.3, 8.4% in, in, in uh, appreciation. And now that we're getting this like 0.5 basis points, I'm like, I don't know. I think like um, we're going to hit 10% again, maybe. I, I can't guarantee it, but like that's healthy. And like I, um, I, I misquoted myself earlier, but um, absorption rate, right? Like um, absorption rate. Sorry, I'm having a hard time saying it. We uh, three months is considered healthy. That's like the amount of supply. Like um, it would take three months if you didn't get any new properties. It would take three months to sell what you currently have. Well, right now we're at 2.2 months absorption rate. So it would take 2.2 months to sell everything we have right now. So I don't know. I, I think it's not so bad, the market. And then like I looked and days on market last year was 29 days. And this year it's 34. So it's five days. Yeah. Yeah. But everyone's like running around like their heads. Now, to be fair, the NAR lawsuit is about to like, re have you heard the like the, the T on all this? Like what's no, really no, happening? Yeah, fill us in. Okay. Now. I'm not an expert, but I talked to all these like smart people. So like I'm paraphrasing, maybe misspeaking, but I mean well. But essentially, the NAR lawsuit, every like the NAR owes a ton of money, but they don't really have a ton of money. Um, and so they're saying our October dues are due in October, like October 31st. And so it's kind of our big bill of the year. So I'm gonna pay because I'm gonna like keep being an agent or whatever. But like other people are like, the market's terrible. Like they just want to get out. But the NAR said, hey, if you do not pay your dues October 31st for next year or whatever, like you will not be included in the settlement of the lawsuit and they can come after you individually. So it's like, you can't leave us. You oh, can't leave wow. us. So but you, then, you want to sell. Like they're still saying you better hang in there. Or uh -huh. So dead. then it gets crazier. It gets, it. In this one, like I say, because like like with because energy right now, but like I, I know how this affects real people, so it's very sad. But like they don't have any money, right? And they still have to pay this huge bill. So what they what the attorneys have told I'm paraphrasing attorneys, by the way, in my market. Um, they said this to like a hundred realtors, brokers, whatever, that they're gonna let like the the new rules went in place like August 13th, 16th or whatever. So they're going to just let time go by, right? Tick, tock, one more month, one more month, one more month. And then they're going to be like, okay. <laughs> and they're going to be like, subpoena showing time. Do you know what showing time is? Showing time is the tool that realtors get like showing information on how to get into the house and all that stuff. 
And okay. it's owned by Zillow, not by NAR. So then, this is where it's crazy. They're going to be like, huh, Sally, I see that you showed this property on October 31st. Um, I'm going to need to see that form that was supposed to be signed by you for you to be compliant as a new as the new rules. And if they can, cannot come up with that form, and I might be getting this part fudged a little bit, the first offense is, is $2,000. And then, but they're going to go, okay, well, also I'm going to need to see this date and this date and this date. So then the second fine is like a, I think it's like 2,500 and then the broker gets fined $500. So, and then they're going to be like, Sally, well, shoot, that's three offenses because I found another one where you didn't have the form. Now you can't practice for six months. So now you have like a stay at home mom who's like, just like, hey, not only did you lose how you're going to make money, but you just got a bill for $4,500. And your broker's pissed at you for costing them $500. And you might put the broker under because then they're going after Keller Williams and Remax and all those people. And so like, do you, yeah. Do you feel like the, the NAR sit, sit down and said, okay, this is going to be our strategy? to get the money back that I don't you know. I wasn't in the room. I'm just like I just <laughs> I had lunch. I had lunch with the attorney that was talking to the people in the room and like this is where we're at. So but people like, can put two and two together though. I mean Yeah, you know. so the fear is like obviously people are gonna pay this bill probably if they're smart in October. Um but what's then what what likely will happen is like we'll find out how many people really are not practicing anymore because then we'll have another bill and it won't be as big but like i'm guessing that's when it's like they don't re-up they don't pay whatever everyone goes into escrow whatever so they're anticipating 50 percent of realtors to not be practicing by the end of wow. this year oh, wow. by the end of this year so the numbers on this we have 1.5 million realtors in the country right now that's 750 agents left 750,000 and 750 gone and like those people what are getting released into the worst job market we've had in a long time and this is like it's a bubble i don't know how people can make money on this but it's a bubble there's something bad here that someone could make money on but it's sad and it's like i don't know like i, I had lunch with that mortgage lender and he's like yeah a lot of people like you can look them up but they're not selling like that you don't like they're probably doing something else or whatever. And it's like, and like, I have a family member who's worried about all this stuff and panicked and she's not practicing right now. She's pulling her license with, I don't know, with the October 31st thing, but, and I'm like, I get this form signed before I show a property. And then I uh, make sure that I get this form signed as well. And like to make sure I'm guaranteeing my compensation from the other broker and I'm insulated in the, in the situation. It's two new forms right now, but there's some brokerages allegedly, according to my mortgage guy, who's like, you can call an agent and ask them with the cooperating commission and they won't say anything back. They won't respond. And EXP, EXP said, we're not offering any cooperating commissions. Don't even bother calling us. And their stocks dropped 10% that day. So the market responded in some way, but if they're right, it's cool. I mean, they might make some money. So for our listeners that don't know what NAR is, I assume that's a National Association of Realtors. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So, you smart big job, Nick. So yeah. what is the what is their what is their main role? I mean, is it kind of like like it's ironic of... because it's supposed to be like not a union, and that's what there's a lawsuit right that's now. That's what I was and, about to say. Is that a yeah. union? Is it a union? It's not. But like Michigan, there's like a group of realtors in Michigan that are suing NAR and saying like, "Yo, you're supposed to be." acting in our best interest like you're not acting in our best interest and then there's other people suing suing saying it's anti-consumer and like for the buyers and like it's like i don't know it's gonna change a bunch two or three more times and like but it's like silly and it's just like it makes it more difficult it makes everyone like even me i'm asking questions like you because i don't i write offer sight unseen for my clients all the time and i'm supposed to get this form signed before i show a property and most people show a property, write an offer. Not me, I have to get that form signed and then write the offer. And it's usually same time. So it's going to look like I'm shady, but I just never show the property. So if they do the showing time thing, 
they're not going to have any showings for me. So I don't know how they're going to be able to find me. It's, it's crazy. And it's like, um, I, I created a product with my, my business partner, David, and it, like, it's been received pretty well, to be honest, but everyone's afraid right now to put their neck out because of all the rules. But like we built a tool and it's like, uh, okay, like a realtor sees that I have something listed and they're like, I need to know the cooperating commission. And I say, yo, I have no idea. I have too many listings. Go to this website, put my pin code in, put the address in, and then you'll get a signed document for me guaranteeing your commission. And also because I'm very kind, I've already populated and generated your buyer's agency agreement. So that's done for you too. So I'm totally keeping everyone compliant in the situation. I don't have to talk to other agents on the phone, text. Um, and we have some people using it. I'm using it on all my listings and I don't have to talk to people, but some people are putting it in the contract and that's fine. And honestly, it's always been negotiable, right? Like the, the buyer's agency agreement, um, it, everything's always been negotiable, but I don't think putting it in the contract is the right thing. And I'm, I'm not trying to be ego here, but like I have a ton of listings. And so like I have some people I charge certain rates because they give me a ton of business, like keep me busy. And then other people, it's like, oh, I will, I, I still give them a different rate, but it's like different, right? Because they only give me one every seven years or whatever. Yeah. So I had someone like call me and was like, this is before my tool was made. And they're like, um, hey, Rob, like what's the cooperating commission? And I said, 2.5, because most of my deals I like are 2.5 because what I do, my volume people. And honestly, it was 2.75 for them. And I had no idea. So when I, I countered them because they put their commission as three on the paperwork and I said, no, 2.5. So technically I could have pocketed 0.25 extra by just pushing back. And technically my seller wouldn't have cared. So it's kind of weird. And that's why I don't put my commission in the contract personally. That's not my tool of choice. Um, but I just feel bad because I didn't mean to do that. And I saw it and I was going to correct it once we got through in, like repairs and we, the repair request came back bad. So like, it, I never had to like apologize for it, but I would never do that to someone. Like I always, I'm a team player. We're all here to do the same thing. Like, let's just get it done. I see your heart and your passion in the industry. I'm going to peel back and throw you a little fork in the road. I'm going to hand you one of those, um, yeah. crystal balls, the thing that you kind of peel and it gives a concrete or the yeah. triangle answer. So here's the question I have for you. When you're looking at the 0.5 basis points in my 101 level understanding, I'm going to say that more first time home buyers will be able to afford a little more home or qualify for more, which allows them to in turn afford more of a property or get a property for their first, let's just call it first time home buyer. What's your fortune teller look 90, 180 days out when you see that basis drop? Is there going to be more houses on the market? Or are you going to see a spike in prices? Like what's your what's your crystal ball prediction over the next 90, 180 days with the result of that movement? I'm so glad I talked to someone smart today at lunch. Uh, my mortgage <laughs> lender, like he gave me some good like nuggets right now. Um, we didn't eat lunch like, together, though. Uh, what? <laughs> we didn't yeah. eat lunch together, though, right? <laughs> yeah, now, yeah. Somewhere, somewhere else. Somewhere else. Exactly. Right. Exactly. You're right. You're right. So um, he said... Um, the cool thing, this have you heard about this phenomenon? I was like, no, tell me. I haven't heard about any phenomenon in a long time. And he said this uh, this dropping of the rates is triggering sellers to be okay, like moving up or moving down, which before they weren't. So it's every time right now, obviously we're creating new sellers and new buyers, but like it's not just all new buyers, which is like what we want because then the sellers are giving us some like, big properties to, for people. The luxury market's going to be having a hard time still. I mean, like you have to bring so much money to the table. And I'm seeing just a lot more FHA offers, which honestly, the appraisals haven't been bad. My BA appraisal, I just had had no issues, which was a first. And it speaks to my clients, great work, but that was cool. Um, and then we're seeing a lot of Metro money and there's this Metro money and it's a really cool program, but like it's difficult because a lot of my almost all my clients use hard money, right? 10% down and they're paying like 10, 12% interest. Well, those programs, if you get it to the finish line, probably 55 days. And so that's two months of debt service. And like, if it doesn't, like that might be fine for some deals, but others, when you're paying out of pocket on that debt service, it eats you. Like, and you, it's like, 
it, it, it depends on your interests. Like we, we are entertaining them a lot more because like you got to dance with who wants to dance with you. But, um, it's, I don't know. It's good because I have contractors and stuff to refer my clients to, to like, Hey, if you need this work done, like just call my people. Um, and that's kind of like the business, right? Like being able to refer good people that like know what they're doing. It seemed like you got a good pulse and a good heart for it. What's maybe your two biggest, uh, points of enjoyment, uh, part of the deal, closing the deal, you know, whatever you want to call it. What, what two things do you kind of hang your hat on as far as what you get to do day in and day out? Um, I like to be really like creative in the industry and I like the opportunity that the industry presents. Cause like everybody's been doing stuff the same way for like a long time. And it's like, I tried doing it like my first, like two or three years of being a realtor, I was like trying to do what everyone else was doing and like, it just didn't work for me. And, uh, so then just kind of finding like what works for me. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to throw you a compliment. So I've seen you over the years. I'm going to almost call you a serial, um, a networker. Yeah. You, you're always at a coffee meeting. You're always at a real estate conference. You're always at a random place that has nothing to do with real estate to connect to real estate. Talk to me about your theory as far as networking and never being satisfied with the network of the business cycle you have right now. Yeah. Okay. So I get it. I'm so weird. I love getting weird with stuff. So like I put together like a Euchre club and um, just oh, like, I love Euchre. yeah, Most right. Know what that is. Of course you do because you're from the Midwest, right? Midwest, yeah. 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 And it's all, it's all Midwest people, right? Michigan, Indiana, all of us like, and it was great. And I like just started putting, putting it together. I put it out on Reddit, like, Hey, we're going to be here. And it got huge. But then it started being like a lot of work. And then I was like, I don't even want to go. And then I just stopped going. And I, like we, I to we tossed the baton over. I think it's kind of died off, but it was like really cool reaching out. And like, you know, a lot of those people were like looking for an excuse to leave the house. And you, you could tell it was like the highlight of their week. Uh, it like, I don't know. I like doing that kind of stuff, but I ended up meeting like a lot of real people to talk real estate with or like, I don't know. I love hearing about what other people, like other industries are like struggling with and like thinking how like, how do you fit things in to make it like work for everybody? Have you thought about taking it to the next level and doing being one of those guys that's like selling systems or programs or whatever or teaching, you know, well, like that sort of thing? Okay. So uh I went to what was it? Hunter Thompson's conference. Um like uh like, like you... Hunter S. Thompson? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like oh no, new... no, no, not him, oh. but he's from Louisville. He's from okay, Louisville. Okay. It's it's Hunter Thompson or something. It's about like um generating like uh rep, like cash or whatever okay. and uh and i was like oh i just want to go but like i'm not trying to like get anybody's money i just wanted to like meet people and so i went and uh, one day i microdosed rooms and i like never do that but i was like kind of anxious because i'm like damn like these people might be really smart i might be talking to someone really important and not know it and i might be yeah. just filling up the whole room with just me talking and then so i wanted to be more like laid back or whatever so I talked to three different people throughout the day and all three of them asked me like, like, do you coach or whatever? I was like, no, like, I don't, cause like, <laughs> but it's funny. I like, I'm so generous with like how I do things, but like, it's true. No one takes you up on anything. I literally, I literally sent an email out yesterday to 26,000 people. It's like, guys, I have this template on how to write letter of intents using chat to BT and you just copy and paste what i said with the address and what the listing price is and it's going to populate a low ball cash offer hard money offer um and then it's also going to populate a seller finance deal with seven percent down whatever and agents are legally obligated to present all offers so i can have all my clients now can write a letter of intent in 30 seconds on any property listed out there that's been on the market 30 days 45 days whatever i sent out an email to twenty six thousand people and it's still going out. We have emails going out like 200 an hour from like eight in the morning till 6 p.m. So it's going to go out for like three more weeks or whatever. But like only like 20, 25 people have asked for it. And like I'm and I'm doing and I gave it for free. And I do this with my clients. I have three clients who do this and they go and look and then they well, I just gave them the new template yesterday. But like they were doing it on their own. I taught them how to do it. And then they just did what worked. And they write a paragraph on why they're great buyers. And then we submit it. And then it really, it's usually it doesn't get anything done, but it's like, well, we don't want to do this, but we'll do this. And it's like, okay, write it up and we'll write it up on a real contract with real terms and real inspections. And then, but it works. We get, we, we had someone who didn't accept 
our lowball cash shop around an eight unit, but it was close and we did get it basically where we wanted it. So it, it's just like shoot your shot and it's just fishing lines out. It takes me 30 seconds instead of a, a 20 minute Galar contract. And I'm, it's just like anybody can do it, any market, anywhere. I'm not making money of people doing it other places, but it's like, it's cool. And like, everyone should be doing it. But like, I'm, so you asked if I sell coaching or anything. No, but my business partner is like the AI dude. And so we have, we sell AI. So I have AI working for me all the time. So right now it's like texting. I don't know if we're, I think we're up to like 300 people an hour, but like four sale by owners and expires. And we're like, Hey, like, would you be interested in talking to a realtor about like listing your house? We're really good. We've got this great buyers list, like cash buyers, whatever. And they say yes. And then like I find an agent to take the appointment and it's just doing that all the time. But today there's 214 agents that couldn't sell properties. They expired in Louisville. And so now we're just like our AI is just going back and forth with all those people. And like, she's going to have like seven listing appointments tomorrow. I almost guarantee it. That's and it's like, wild. but we're, we also, own a, you know, we work with wholesalers and they're, they're going after the same people for wholesale deals. So like, we're going to solve their problem one way or the other. And it's like, but what agent can reach out to 200 people at a time? Like I can like nobody, like who can. I mean, isn't, isn't the landscape of business and technology now so amazing? It's so crazy because every, I don't think that we have one person that we have an interview or a conversation with that chat GPT or some sort of AI doesn't come up, you know, come up in the conversation. I mean, like, you know, that, and that's, it's still, if you think about it, it's still fairly new, you know, I mean, chat GPT didn't start to what, like it only became popular, what, just a couple years ago? It, it all changed when, um, it had memory when it could remember what I said. Mm -hmm. Cause then I, I would, I literally would talk and walk and talk in my backyard and I'd be like, this is my whole business. Every little bit articulated whole yeah. ecosystem. And then I could be like, how can I fix this? What should I do next? What would Alex or Mosey do? And it's just like all day, <laughs> you know, it's yeah, awesome it's though. Yeah. yeah. It is. So what does it look like? Like I always go back to Jeffersonville. I'm sorry. I'm not overly. No. Yeah. Yeah. Football, but over in Jeffersonville, for instance, there's the Red Yeti. I mentioned it for the second time, but there's a good, there's a uh, cigar shop right on that main little drag there. Give me a sense of you're acquiring a new agent, uh, a new point of contact, a new network. You're trying to woo this person. What environment do you like? I mean, it's easy to say, let's go, let's let's sit in a stiff conversation and let's eat a nice steak. Who are we we're, wooing? We're, like, we're, are we wooing an ambassador or who are we wooing? It could be anybody, anybody new to your network, meeting them for the oh, first time. Oh, like to what, get them just to be yeah, interested. Yeah, I'm trying to like, say stylistically, like I, you don't strike me, and I'm not, I'm not saying I know you, but you don't strike me as a shirt and tie going to the nicest steakhouse in town. Oh no, what, what's your no, well, setting that you like to attain that? Yeah, no, okay, so like, um, honestly, I I don't leave the house that much. I cook a lot of burgers and steaks. I don't eat seed oils. Like I'm carnivore mostly. Just got rid of ice cream, unfortunately. Um, but no, I mean, like, I think the people I talk to all the time are just all doing really cool stuff. And then you just start applying it to your life and then seeing what they're doing and apply it to your friends' lives. Because my investors, right, like, someone's like, well, I did this wording and now I don't have to foreclose on this property. I can just, like, do it quicker. Like, the, the eviction process and all that. It's like, dope. Can I have that wording? And then they give it to you. And then now all my clients have that wording. So, mm -hmm. like, I don't know. Talk to me a little bit about uh, give, give us a give us a killer sound bite. If I, I, if your audience is listening to it and my audience is interested in real estate and hearing it for the first time, talk about a topic that hasn't been discussed up to this point, and give us some application of hey, this is the new horizon, or this is the buzz phrase. Take that any direction you want to take. Hmm. Give me a quick second. I think I want to think because I, I, I think I can come up with something clever. I just got to think. I think. I I kind of want to give it like, could I just give a call to realtors like for hope? Yeah, because like they just, to, this is your mic. This is your see, stage, man. Yeah, sure. The sound just, clips, yeah, it's, just, it's, AI, it's AI for the sound clips, too. So when we do that, you know, I'm like, I just put the link for the YouTube video in there and it yeah. spits out all what they say is the viral, you know, sound bite. So. What, well, whatever you want. I like, okay, so I think realtors are like really um, just like not happy. <laughs> and they're like having a hard time. It's it's really difficult. But 
the people that like run businesses like realtor like businesses like have llc's like you know like cpas that know how to do prepare taxes like the professionals like market share is about to be insane and i had this good talk with this guy named earl and earl's really smart and like i'm probably i'm i've been around the block for a while and i'm pretty well known in our market whether you like me hey me whatever but well known i'm probably a ton of people's second agent right now like but their their cousin friend whatever might be like falling off and that's true for like 50 percent of the industry right there's so much market share available for the people that are like door knocking or doing whatever you're doing now competing against ai like i'm doing that's like man versus machine good luck but like I think there's a ton of opportunity and if like you need to niche up, like it's not just okay to be an agent anymore. Like you need to know how to do special things. Like I do short sales. I do innovations. I, I help wholesalers. I help flippers get set up with money and infrastructure. So they all the way through the process. So it's seamless. And then I get the relist and then they're happy. And then they go buy four more. And it's just like over and over. It's, it's people just need to systemize their businesses more. And then like, it's it's going to be a weird time because like everyone's like if your realtor died off like maybe google becomes more prevalent again like maybe you need better seo maybe you need to have a real good website like because like people are going to start like looking again like it's it's maybe because if ever like i don't know if they're all dying off like the people have to find someone and i like to think like i'll get some attrition because like people want to work with experts and like i'm still moving product pretty pretty good good clip i guess yeah no let's get did, did you uh did you ever see yourself doing this when you're a kid no did i didn't i thought i was going to be um an attorney honestly when i was a kid um but then like i was like the schooling i'm just like so add and i was like there's no way there's no way i'm gonna get yeah. through that school uh, but then but i was i was like pretty smart but like a b student or whatever but i was always interested in like the person next to me so i like so i just like connecting with people and then like i like meeting the people that are doing cool stuff and like trying to amplify what they're doing and then try to connect in a way and then when i got my business partner david like the wizard behind the curtain it was like everything is doable and it's like david i want to do this and he's like what well i guess we could do it this way he just like makes it happen and it's like it's crazy being feeling that empowered all the time and now i'm realizing how much like the team is so important Hey, so I'm going to pull you off your home block for a minute here. Yeah. I, I got family in South Ice over by horse race and country there in Lexington, but um, I visited Frankfurt. I visited Lexington, right? Those yeah. are the two areas that I know because we drove into those cities. Pull yourself out of Louisville. Give me a couple names of emerging market cities throughout the state of Kentucky, just so people that are in the Midwest listening to our podcast and listening to you yeah. What are your up and coming cities and uh maybe what's a city that would would surprise people that the investment opportunities are right right now? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So um Shelby County, which is not like Louisville proper, it's like a county, right? They just got um some kind of cool battery thing as well, and it's like another two billion dollars or something like like we're really becoming some special hub for that. Um, and that's going to blow up that area, just like the Radcliffe E-Town area. So like, if you're a burr person and you want to burr in that area, like, like you can refi. No, you're going to probably have a ton of appreciation, uh, down the road, but low key, like whatever politics you like, whatever Bashir is bringing a ton of business to Kentucky. So like there's some like Georgetown, Kentucky is getting like another, like, Toyota expansion, I believe, as well. Like, but Louisville, I mean, we have stuff going on. It's it's insane. And I'm like, what's going to happen when we can actually attract talent? Like, with with the lower, like, I don't know. It's all going to build out because in Indy, we we don't have anything right like to sprawl out. So, my theory, you asked for a crystal ball. Louisville and Kentucky will be like a Dallas Fort Worth eventually, because okay. that Shelby okay. County right. is in between Louisville and um lexington so if you want to just play that fun game look at uh lexington Fayette county and we're or is it i think it is sorry i have no idea and we're in jefferson yeah that's right just work your way back that whole corridor in between go buy that stuff that stuff's great northern kentucky is doing some crazy stuff 
Like, really, you can't go wrong. But like, low key, when I talk to all my clients on the phone for that first time, I'm like, honestly, by the Midwest, like, Indy's dope. I say Ohio, so Cincinnati, Dayton is kind of where I'm from. And like, I'm not as high on, but Columbus is blowing up. Like, you really can't miss. But like, I'll tell you, all the Nashville money, all the Nashville money, it's coming our way. It's all going our way. And E Town uh, is in between us. Um, that area of Ratcliffe that I was talking about. So like if all the Nashville money's coming our way, like it's gonna be easier for them to get projects wedged in between us so they can check on them, whatever. I I just think okay. So remember you asked me earlier and I was talking all, almost all my clients are willing to buy somewhere on Dixie Highway. Like so and that goes all the way to E Town, all the way through up to Louisville. So like if you just like there's a place for it. Really, there's a place for buying any type of property. You just have to have the property management say, yo, we love to manage there. We manage stuff over there. And you need a GC that says, yeah, I'm willing to do the work. And if you can was do that, it, buy anywhere. Well, someone, you, you were saying that the market share is about to go way up, you know, with what, all, the, all that stuff that we were talking about. Yeah. If somebody was wanting to get into the real estate market as a, you know, just as a realtor or whatever, like they just kind of want to dip their foot in or maybe start a career in that what advice would you give them or would it even be as simple as don't um i would not recommend to anyone to become an agent right now, a new agent to be honest and like and that's kind of really cool to me because like i i'm really kind of generous like i would generally say like oh you do it whatever but i think like we're in this weird thing where it's like so many people are hearing everything going on and they're like nah i don't i like that seems like a lot i'm not going to do that and then all the service people that couldn't serve during COVID that all got their license, they're like, well, now I can't do this because like, it's not making any money anymore. And like I said, the unemployment, it's just, I don't know. So I think the people, like there's a ton of market share. And like, I've always worked with investors. So it's repeat business, repeat business. And like, you do good, they're going to tell somebody else. They're going to tell somebody else. And then they're going to go buy four more or, or they're going to do a 1031 into a quadplex that I'm going to help them procure, give them great management. And, Tell them about all the cool programs, but I really just want everyone to just really use me more as a plug. Like I love to serve, like just ask me weird questions. I want to tell you weird answers. I want to, because I, if I don't know the answer, it's kind of weird to me and I want to look it up so I can answer it for everybody else. That's yeah. like, it's a challenge. Yeah. So, so you, you recognize that the more you give, the more that you receive, you know, the more, the more you give back, the more it just kind of works that way. You know, it's all being connected. See, you yeah. bumped into me at Churchill Downs and, you know, we're watching a race or whatever right there in uh, your hometown. And I hear that you're talking real estate with one of your other investors. And I kind of randomly interrupt that conversation and just want to start talking real estate. Let's say I don't have a lot of uh, money to get into the market, but yeah. my dream is to own that rental house. Now, I'm giving you a hypothetical, but I'm actually speaking about myself, to be honest with you. Yeah. How, no. how, do, you bu how do you bust? How do you bum rush that door to where six months from now, a year from now, I've got my first rental property, uh, non owner occupied there in your, in your home city? Well, the two simplest solutions, and truly you should take advantage of them. One, you send me an email and say, hey, Rob, please send me up for anything listed with any seller financing. So you're going to get all the MLS stuff. Then I'm going to get you set up on all the commercial stuff. And then I have all my off market. So the goal is like nothing falls through the cracks. That's like the general idea. But then I plug you into my infrastructure. So if you get, if you were plugged into my infrastructure, you would have gotten an email yesterday saying, Hey, if you want to learn my letter of intent thing, if you do that thing and you probably submit like 30 offers, right? With that using my template thing, just request it in the email if you got it. But if just request it for me and I'll send it to you. If you send 30 out, I bet you're going to get some bites. And the, the problem with it is the agents have to get paid on that. And so I put 7% built into the tutorial because I was just thinking maybe 6% for the realtors and then 1% for the seller to line their pockets a little bit because they usually want something, right? Uh, but then, so yeah, you submit that. So you're always going to have to come out 7%, but 7% on something that could be, that could rent, right? And maybe you, you, you get to negotiate the term. So what is your monthly payment? Maybe it's really low. I have no idea. Like that's where the experts expert, but I list stuff with seller financing and I connect my, my sellers to negotiate the seller financing. So then it's up to you with your skills, right? You reach out to me in that email and you say, Rob, tell me about your seller finance deals. I'll be like, yo, I've got two of them. 
and I'll put you in a text with those people and say, hey, they're interested. They'd love to talk shop. Then they're going to be like, hey, what can you do? How much can you put down? Like, how much can you pay monthly? Like, and then figure it out. And then once it's done, they say, write it up, which is, I have to write up a contract after this. But it's, it's really not that hard. Everybody wins. And then when you just keep doing it, and then you want to convert all your stuff to like lease options and whatever, and you got to know to work with an agent who knows how to articulate these things and, you know, do it. <laughs> Yeah, listeners and viewers get on that list to get plugged in. And what other what other places can we find you on online or social media? Oh yeah. So um, if you want all of our off market deals, it, or you said what would you tell another agent? Steal my shit right here uh, because I don't get paid for any of it. But like, go join our website, Deals Off Market, and the first email you're gonna get it's gonna be meet the team, and it's all these people that don't pay me any money. But it's like my property manager, my GCs, my hard money lenders, my attorney, my CPA, like all these people. And then now you have the best motherfuckers in Louisville, like in that first email. And every realtor can say, hey, just plug into my infrastructure. They're incredible. And they can say it because I can say it. That's what I would do. But I don't okay. I created it, you know, so it's, I don't have to. And it's um, deals off market. Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. We're, we've or got dot, a deal in dot, Alaska. Dot, 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 dot. So yeah, not, yeah, we're we're yeah. AI backed. Um, we're, we're we do a lot of weird stuff, and like um, one thing I keep talking to people about. You should ask for a soundbite earlier. Like people just don't feel empowered to do anything. Like, and I think that's like crazy, and it's an epidemic because like I was a young agent in my office, and someone's like, "Oh, is there any commercial agents?" And I was like, "So I bought a membership to the KCREA, and was like, yeah, I do commercial deals." If I didn't know how to do it, I would ask questions from my people that knew how to do shit. And then, boom, I, I started getting all the referrals. I said, oh, I speak a little Spanish. I started getting all the Spanish referrals. Like, and, you could, and I do. I, I lived in Ecuador for four months. My Spanish is terrible. But and now with AI, though, anybody can really say, yeah, I can cater to this because AI has changed the game. But yeah. like, people just don't feel empowered. And like, I just don't like i'm like why not and like the, my my father it's like a rule in our family like if it doesn't say you you can't you can and so like other people are like well i can't just do that it's like well why not and like uh i'll give you a story about like fishing if you're fine with it um but do you guys know who david green is he's like he, he wants to host a bigger pockets or whatever I, I've Raymond never Turner. heard the name, but I'm huge in the fishing. We'll talk off record. Oh, you say no, that. it's not fishing. It's yeah. like a, a metaphor. I metaphorically. I do like gotcha. fishing, though. Uh, but he was like the host of Bigger Pockets, and he spoke on a podcast episode. And everybody, Bigger Pockets, biggest investor po uh, podcast in the country. And so he didn't say Louisville, but all these people were listening on their commutes or while they're working, and they're like, oh, this guy's saying Louisville. And so they went to the Bigger Pockets. Louisville Forum and like lo and behold, it's only me posting whatever I feel like. And I read the news like 10 times a day. So I'm like, oh, this is probably good for this market. And I'm like, hey, this is really great for Airbnb owners. And then I just keep posting shit. No one says anything, no one clicks, whatever. But when people go to look shit up, it's like, well, I'm going to go talk to that guy. He seems to know what's going on. Uh, yeah. And it's no effort to me because I like knowing what's going on. I like knowing the concerts. It's just like, it's work doesn't have to suck. Everybody thinks it has to suck. Sorry. No, I, I love it. I love that you're passionate about it. Kind of a little jealous, you know, because wouldn't it be great if we all just had something that we could be that passionate about, you know, that, that pays money. You know, I like creating. Money. Like, uh, there's other stuff we're working on that's like, it doesn't pay, but like, I want to build a dating app to re revise how that's done and change it, well, make it oh, more. That'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah, but my business partner, like I haven't made him enough money for him to be like, fine, we'll make this up yet. But he hasn't yeah. said like, no, no, yeah. It's been like, no, but maybe. So. I mean, it's good. It, yeah, well, you probably want to give out your secrets, but like. No, it, I'll tell well, you, it's hilarious. Okay, tell, tell, I'd like yeah. to know. It's called, the name of the app, my name's Rob Bergeron. Uh, the name of the app is Reject Rob. And so the idea is I'm the first, like, I'm like the MySpace guy, the first swipe right or swipe left. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so, like, the idea, and I don't mean this in a weird way, I'm not dating anyone or whatever, but, like, I could conceivably have a date anywhere in America because someone probably swipe right on me in Hawaii or whatever. I thought that was kind of hilarious. Uh, but the idea is, this is where it gets crazy. Uh, so you connect with people, do it superficially, whatever you want, like every other dating app, Hinge, all that stuff. 
but you swipe and then you connect. But in your connection is our friendly AI dude or whatever. Like, well, we don't know what it is yet. Call it what you want. But it's in there. It's like, oh, hey, guys. Like, I'm so glad to meet you, too. Um, tell me about yourself. And it's asking the question. So you, they don't have to string along the questions. And then they're going to listen. It's going to be like, oh, they like Ben Folds. And then like maybe three days later, they're going to be like, hey, guys, I saw this band that's similar to Ben Folds coming in town. Maybe you guys should check it out. Two weeks later, they've been texting back and forth. It's like, hey, guys, shouldn't we just like shit and get up or, or get off the pot? Like, because the yeah, idea is get you in person. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's like, awesome. yeah. I like, I'd like the idea of being like, yo, I'm like, I'm going, I'm single and I'm going to uh, Urban and Beyond like in a couple of weekends. I'd love to be like, yo, at 3.30, everyone's just going to meet over here single and just say hi to people because everyone wants to be said hi to. And then it's so, like, Boom. It didn't cost anybody money, but now you're meeting people in person and a cool place and doing the same things you like to do, which is so maybe the start point. a local. Yeah, like maybe yeah, you start yeah, a local. Yeah. Well, uh, you know the I'm... most hilarious shit? This is the funniest shit. So it's really hard to launch a dating app. Like everyone has dating oh, app I'm ideas. Sure. Yeah. Right? But strangely enough, um, would you say the um, real estate market is dominated perhaps by more men than women? I don't, I, mean, I don't think so, but maybe. I guess real estate investing. That's, I guess, sorry, let's investing? go back to Okay, yeah. Then yeah sure, because yeah. I go to like our Korea meeting, like which is our local RIA, and it's like a lot of dudes. We do have women, but it's a ton of dudes. And so I was thinking, I market to everybody on my buyers list, which is 400,000 people, and say, hey, we have a really professional, like people, adults, dating app where you meet other adults. And then I figured I could attract all these women be like, hey, these dudes are doctors, lawyers, whatever, trying to invest in their future. Like, these are the kind of dudes you want to meet. And same for the women if they're in that stuff too. But it's like, those are like, I figured the women would want to meet dudes that are like thinking about like more than tomorrow. And that's like a good step in the right direction. So we have our built-in client base here and it would just have to spread out. I love it. Yeah, and for especially for people that are ADD like us, you know, like I hate, having to fill out all those damn bios and everything. Yeah. You know? So so that's perfect. And the AI that they use on, say, Tinder or one of those things yeah. suck. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, you can't think of what the reply or what they're saying. So you, you try to click on on the use AI and it's like, oh, how yeah. was your afternoon? You know what I mean? Like something like that. So, so I have a hat for dating, actually, now that you say <laughs> that. I'm like, I'm um, I'm five, six, so I'm like not tall, probably is not anyone ideal, whatever. But I do really well dating. I do, I've been dating like doctors, lawyers, like surgeons. Like it's crazy. And like what I did is like as soon as I match with someone, because you still have to have that initial like, oh, I think they're sure. hot. They think I'm okay. But then I immediately move it to audio and I talk to them. It's like, oh, hey, how was your day? Whatever. And I let them know I'm a real person and I can hold a conversation. And like it keeps them more interested because they're like, oh, they're, they can talk. They can put it, you know, in it seems to be my hit rate on like conversations that don't talk or lead to a date and conversations that do lead to a date. It's when I like let them know what I actually sound like. And like, yeah, they were, it's, it's a move. And it's like, and another weird thing I've been doing that's dope too, because I kind of want to know what people are like. I always just hit them as like, Hey, why don't we find, like, I always say something like, like an audio message. I'm like, let's find out really what we're, how compatible we are. And I send them a blend. Um, on Spotify, if you know what that is, it's a uh, no, yeah, no, what you know what Spotify is, but it's a link and allows you to collaborate based on your both of your music interests, and it gives you a score on like how much you listen to the same shit, and you get a playlist, and yeah, you get a playlist, and it has like your picture on like songs that you presented to the playlist, both your pictures if you both liked it, and then one like songs of theirs will have their picture. And so That's it introduces cool. you to new stuff and you, it lets you talk about like, oh, we both love that song. I was like, it's my favorite band. And like, I thought no one else knew it. Like, it's just so much easier, easier to like just vibe. I don't know. And I, it's hard to connect these days. And it's like, might as well be more personable and like, I don't know. Yeah, my, in my odd mind and uh, ADD, I'll throw it out there. I got it too, man. But uh... yeah. We got to come up with a random ass networking that we do there in Louisville because it's only two hours for us. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but just a off the beaten path, you know, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, we do that yeah, all the time. That, yeah, that, that I would used be to... badass for me because see, I got I got micro share, so honestly, I can go behind the scenes and get in the panic area and then if yeah. the horse wins, I can go in the winter circle. Okay, oh, that's so. cool, dude. But, but point I'm making is, is like horse racing, pickleball, fishing, sports, real estate, like throw together a pot of three fishermen, two real estate guys, guys yeah. that like horse racing. And like, we love let's, doing let's, shit. Let's just, yeah, let's just have a weird ass like meeting yeah, as opposed we've got to a like cool a guru. Pool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got yeah. good people and that, like we know where stuff, all the good man. food is. Yeah. No, um, so. we've been wanting to do more of that. And I was talking to someone, I was like, I need to do more of that during the winter. I used to like, like I said, I would go to like, excuse me, six meetups, like literally every week for like three years. And I literally, I spoke at one this week, but I hadn't been to one for like six months, honestly. But I wanted to start doing more of these micro things because I like doing the stuff I like to do. And like, if my clients and my friends do the same shit, it's like, oh, this isn't work. This is fun. And like, work doesn't have to suck. Unbelievable. Yeah. Well, hey, hey, Rob, thanks so much for being on, man. It's been a really interesting conversation. And if you yeah. uh, if you want to hang tight for just a second, we can talk a little bit more. Yeah, thanks for having right. me.